we are back with another what wing waves video we were literally playing what wing waves and i wanted to go over shorekeeper she's been out for like i don't know 10 hours 12 hours at this point um it is very apparent uh based on this update for quite a few reasons shorekeeper is a must pull unit uh, there, there's no doubt about it i'm gonna be honest with you obviously you can play the game however you want uh, if you are not pulling shortkeeper, you're absolutely limiting your your account in multiple ways, not only in end game content, but just actually having a good sustain on your team. So Verena is still good. Verena is still viable. Verena still needs to be used and Baiji still needs to be used. So we'll get to the new TOA mode in a little bit. I already dropped a video on that if you want to go check that out. But shortkeeper is a must, but this weapon is not. This weapon is not a must pull. And so I want to break down both why Shorekeeper is a must pull, why Stellar Symphony is low key, a little bit of a ways for you, and what you could do to honestly uh, just make her the GOAT because she really is the GOAT of sustain. Like it, it's actually insane how good she is. So let's break this down. Uh, I went over her kit in depth in her, uh, in the tutorial video that I put up already. Uh, there is still a little bit of confusion on what she scales with. Uh, if it's HP, people are telling me she scales with ER. I'm looking at something like this and seeing HP. I see HP. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll find out that later. I mean, regardless, you want roughly 250 to 275 ER. Again, there's a little bit of confusion on the exact number as well, but you want as much ER as possible with Shortkeeper because what happens is in her ultimate form, she's going to be giving you up to 12.5% crit rate and 25% crit damage based on her ER substats. So for sure, Get it there for sure you want as much er as possible right 229 is not bad but we, we can get that a little bit better uh, which i will uh get up there but 229 you're gonna get uh pretty much effects from it just not the full max potential so it's very very crucial a lot of times people say oh you want this er you want this er uh it's simply built in her kit to have as much er as possible so you could actually get the buffs from her ultimate so keep that in mind when people say loosely okay you kind of want the cr no you legitimately need 250 at least plus to get the max value from her kit keep that in mind again 229 is not bad she just dropped we're, we're gonna get we're gonna get some crazy er substats eventually but anyways i digress so why is she so valuable uh, she is so simple to use and she's not like Baiji where you have to run around you have to pick up the feather or Verena where you're stuck in the air and you have to do a bunch of air combos she's simple she does her normal basic attacks her skill heals you and then her burst heals as well uh, her echo is also sick by the way and then her burst heals right and then her burst not only heals but then it's going to give you an ungodly amount of crit rate and crit damage and the radius of the burst heal uh, is pretty big you know, so this burst is going to be healing you every three seconds. And again, you cast your intro skill twice in here, uh, slash outro skill, you're going to be getting those massive buffs. So she is overall the best sustain, not only just from the front of actually, also you can collect flowers with her. Traversing with her is easily the best thing ever. Um, I don't think you could jump, like you can't go higher. So like you will just fall down, like as you saw there. But I mean, that's not really a big deal. But uh, yeah, traversing with her is super easy as well. But she is overall the most easy sustain to build and easy sustain to actually play. Uh, and she just gives the most buffs. Now her forte is also amazing because her forte, this one is when a resonator other than shortkeeper takes a fatal blow, they will not be knocked down and will instead be healed for 50% of the shortkeeper's HP while shortkeeper loses the same amount of HP. Shortkeeper's HP will not go below 1%. That is for 10 seconds. And also, her intro skill is is pretty important as well. But uh, with that, you're, you're not going to die, and Shortkeeper won't die. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously, Baiji gives you, like, a full revive. That's probably the best out of them, but that requires, I think, like, C6 or something like that. Uh, this is just strictly built into her kit, similar with Verena, where it saves you at the one shot. But instead of saving you at one shot, it'll leave her at one shot, and then it'll leave your main DPS or whoever's about to die at X amount of health. So just again based off of utility and ease of use she's got it absolute nuclear cinema she is the one and the other reason why i think you should be going for her is if we look at the character listing i'm gonna move myself over here for a minute wrong scene there's really only three sustains in the game there's shorekeeper 
There's Verena and there's Baiji. Uh, John C, Jin C, oh, John, C. oh my God. Bro, I called her Gian on my other video and everyone roasted me in the comments. Yeah, mud up. Gia. John Shin. I just woke up. I'm sorry. John Shin is a pseudo sustain. She's really not a good sustain. In order for you to obtain heals from her, you have to do the charge attack, which takes X amount of years. You can get interrupted. The heals could not be fully met if you do get interrupted or if you move. So she's really not that great. Tauchi shielding is pretty abysmal as well. Um, therefore, these two, I, I don't really consider them sustains, you know? So I, I, I would leave that alone. But realistically, like, it's very rare that you are going to be coming across a genuine sustain in the game. We're now in 1.3 and we are first finally getting a five-star dedicated sustain unit that is not a standard banner character, Verena. We have a million DPSs. One, two, I'll count you as three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine, ten, eleven. 11 DPS is just on this account. I actually think this account has every single character. And then a bunch of subs. A bunch of subs. One, we'll count you as two. You know, we'll count you as three, four, five. I'll count you as six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, 11 DPSs, 10 subs, but only three sustains. The likeliness of you getting to the point where you will have another five star sustain is just not very high. As you can see, based on the way they've been pumping out these characters, my man. So, I would look at this and I would say, okay, although her banner is unfortunately not the best, it's a little mid. It's a little mid. The four stars here are not the greatest. Yang Gang's probably the best. Trixie, if you like Trixie, whatever, you, you have problems. <coughs> Excuse me, but with that being said, um, with that being said, what happens is you are now pretty much set. If you have Verena, you get Baiji off rip, you have Shorekeeper, you then have three teams for bum, 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 the final, final, final part of the Tower Diverse that they just dropped, this Overdrive Zone that I dropped a video on. You need three sustains for this new mode. You need three sustains. I know what you're saying. Ethan, I'm not interested in the end game. I'm not interested in all of that. I like Verena or I like Baiji. That's fine. Again, I will not tell you to, you have to roll these characters, but you are significantly, significantly nerfing your account if you are not rolling Shorekeeper. With the amount of buffs she has built into her kit, it's kind of silly. That If you're lacking crit rate, you get crit rate. If you're lacking crit damage, you get crit damage. If you don't like those other two play styles, you get the healing on top of that. And her echo, sidebar, I didn't even touch her echo yet, but her echo is absolutely sick. Her echo is super cool, and it still gives good good stuff. It gives HP and max max attack for your team. Like what? Like insane. Like it, it, it's really good. Obviously, Bell is not bad either, but this is just objectively better. This is just objectively better, straight up. So she is providing so many buffs based off of her kit alone slash echo. That she absolutely outdoes Verena. Now, I believe Verena might be a little bit better for Concierto Energy um, and ob obtaining that. But I that's okay. That's okay. You know, Verena could have having faster intro-outro skills. You could run your Concierto Energy with some other characters. I don't think that is a very big problem. Now, getting to the new version of TOA, I dropped a video on how to beat the normal TOA. In normal TOA, you really only need two sustains. Now, again, I do not... I'm not a personal fan of Baiji, but it is what it is. But in the normal one, once again, you go here. Uh, you pretty much one sustain here and then one sustain on each other side and you call it a day, right? Nothing too crazy. In the overdrive zone, you're going to need three. It is not up for debate. You need three sustains. Uh, level 100, level 100. I think these are level 100 as well. Uh, it, 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 this is actually very, very, very challenging, more challenging than I expected. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's pretty insane. Uh, nuclear drama, nuclear cinema, very good stuff. And so by having ungodly amount of buffs, uh, tons and tons of other just genuine features, again, like just traversing with her, like going, running around with her is just fun. Like, like this is just fun, bro. Like, and then obviously you could dash out of it if you wanted to. Uh, but while you're in this mode, you can't really do anything. And you also build up your forte. So by the time you're done, you have your forte up. So if I do this, now I'm going to run back around with her. Two, three. I don't think I'll get to max, but I have three versions of my forte. 
So you're building her forte, her ease of use, her way to building her. I mean, all sustains are pretty easy to build, but it, it's just simple. It is simple. It's straight to the point. And now th that's really why you should roll her. Like, that's the super basis. Again, if you want a breakdown of how she works and how to build her, I got that video out. Two of the weapon. Why the weapon is bad. Not bad. Let me rephrase this. The weapon is not that great. It is a 14% attack increase for your team. Here is my logic and my reasoning why this weapon is bad. 70.3 ER sounds really good, but this weapon is tied to casting your Resonance Liberation to get Concerto Energy. Variation is with only being 42. I think it goes up to 50 something when you max it out. I'll go to Hakushin real quick. But with Variation, the Concerto, Concerto Energy is tied to the Resonance skill, which you will have up more often than your resonance liberation you, and you don't want to always do resonance liberation just to get your concerto energy regen right <clears throat> should me had a cough so uh that alone is one of the reasons why it's like it's just much better and i think again overall it's only a uh 20 difference in um er let's see where's variation variation goes up to 51.8 and then this goes up to 70. now i think it actually goes up a little bit more the thing is you can say well ethan what what about the er requirement you're saying strictly hit Okay, perfect. Run ER. Run ER here. You run HP with ER, ER, HP bonus, ER. Uh, you will get enough ER. You will 1,000, 1,000%. 1, like, once we put an ER piece here, we hit it. We hit it. Once we actually upgrade the four cost and we will get some sort of ER with healing bonus, you'll hit it. And so, the weapon itself, is, is in just in terms of the ER requirements and the actual passives, Variation is just a lot simpler to use and makes it a lot more streamlined. Now, talking about the actual passives of this weapon, again, I'll go over here. The one resonance skill it heals increase nearby party members attack by 14%. My thought process on this is this. You don't need that. And the reason why you don't need that is you're already getting ER from here uh, off rip. The HP you're getting saved from, and she's already giving you extra crit rate and crit damage built into her kit off rip uh the extra 80 pulls because it's a it's a guaranteed 80 pulls to get the weapon in my mind is not worth it she already has so many buffs on top of her outro already all nearby party members damage is amplified by 15 percent so she's already giving you 15 percent from the outro plus the 12.5 crit rate plus the 25 percent crit damage Plus her echo giving you attack bonus already. I don't think it is worth it. Obviously, it is the most beautiful looking weapon in the game. It is easily the best design weapon they have probably ever made. I, I won't sit here and deny it. But I think you are doing yourself a disservice. Uh, if you have variation, I would say just go with variation. Level this some bitch up all the way and just keep it pushing. Because of the fact that she has so many buffs already, it is insane. And the thing is, in Endgame... TOA, you share you share equipment regardless. So if you're like, well, my Baiji will get an increase with this, okay, but your Baiji is not going to be using this weapon at the same time as this one. You might as well just swap Verena because I assume to variation because you're not using both of them at the same time in the same party. So you can swap the equipment. So to me, it is a no-brainer for just getting variation and calling it a day. If you do not have variation, you could run Comet Flare until the next banner when variation comes out. So the, the weapon, I think, is a little bit of a skip. Not as a little bit. I think it was a big skip. I think the weapon is not required. And at that point, you could save these pulls and you could save your pity for a weapon that will give a bigger increase as well as potentially going for another character. Um, you know, when you look at someone like Chang Li, Chang Li's weapon is a massive, massive power spike from Commando or even Emerald to then Chang Li's weapon. Jin Si's weapon. All Broadblade users' weapons, Jinzi, Jion, uh, these weapons are so much better than something like Autumn Trace. Autumn Trace, and while it gives similar crit rate, the passive here is what really is helping Jinzi so much. And Jion's weapon, massive crit damage, right? So these characters, uh, even, even Stringmaster, we don't... I do, is there a crit rate? Is there a four-star crit rate? I don't know if there is. Uh, Stringmaster is a massive increase. And again, you throw this on Encore as well. The, the reward from using this compared to using something else it is just to me not enough to say okay i think you should be pulling on it and it's a situation like again chang lee jin i'm like hey bro get the weapon get the weapon get the weapon get the weapon that's 48.6 crit damage right as opposed to emeralds uh 22 crit rate uh and then again it helps alleviate the things 
But in her situation, you don't really need crit rate, crit damage. You just need a bunch of VR, which you can get off of these. So it alleviates the process of building her. Since, again, she is a sustain. She doesn't need crit rate, crit damage. So sustains, I don't think they really need those signature weapons like that. So I would, again, skip Stellar, but 1,000% get Shortkeeper. She is going to help you in every situation possible, especially if you were a Rover main. You get that extra stuff with Rover. Uh, she's just great. And I, we don't know when the next time we're going to get a five-star sustain. You know, Camila will not be a sustain. Whoever they drip as well, they won't be a sustain. That's it. They may, they got they gave you the three sustains. You get a ticket, so you could get Verena for free off rip. You get Baiji for free. Now you can run Shortkeeper and they say, okay, go into, go into the new version of TOA. Have fun. Have fun. Also, Inferno Rider... Um, one thing I did not mention about her kit is when you do the outro, you are actually, you'll get like a little aura around whatever characters on field and you can pretty much be immune for a moment. You can dodge, uh, it'll activate a dodge counter for you. Even if you don't dodge, that is super important. This new Inferno Rider, Inferno Rider. I'll drop a video on that. I got him to level six right now. I beat him. His attacks are very overwhelming very overwhelming i found myself running out of stamina quite a lot because i was dodging so much and so i do believe indubitably it could be a situation where maybe they start including some uh some bosses that are just so overwhelming to the point where hey that extra free dodge off of her intro slash outro i mean her outro skill uh is going to be pretty massive so overall man verena is not cooked because verena is definitely better for concerto energy but shorekeeper overall much better much better With that being said let me know what you think are you pulling and why are you pulling i love you i'll see you in the next one the next what doing waves